Hey there folks, Peter here with BlackRock Business and today in QuickBooks Point of Sale Multi-Store, we are actually going to get knee deep into some of the settings for the store exchange. This would be the area in Point of Sale Multi-Store that I see most often misconfigured, which causes a real problem for how your stores are trying to communicate with each other if you're on Multi-Store. So, we're gonna go through all the store exchange settings and how they should be set up. There's not a whole lot of documentation on how this should go and it's often misread or misconstrued and so we're gonna do it right today. You pay attention, pull up your pants, let's go. Okay, that was weird. Okay, so before we get into it, I'm gonna have you click on the link in the description down below to get over to our QuickBooks point of sale Facebook group. Join up there where you can ask questions, request videos, talk to other QuickBooks point of sale users and myself, I will be there as well. If you're on YouTube today, don't forget to hit subscribe so you get all the latest, greatest QuickBooks point of sale videos all the time. <laughs> you're like, calm down, Peter, calm down. I'm just too excited about multi-store here. You know, go on the file menu. We're gonna head to preferences and then company, of course. Right down here, we have a section called multi-store. If you do not have this section, that means you are not on multi-store. Check out the top here. Gotta make sure it says multi-store. If you're on pro or basic, you're not gonna have this section. All right, multi-store. Store codes, I'm gonna point out once again that we have two stores in my store chain. If you didn't see the other two videos or three videos, uh, check this out. These are our two stores. And so I'm gonna go to store exchange. Currently, I'm gonna tell you I am on the headquarters store. And so this is the master store uh, and it can see the other stores. I only have one other store, store number two. Now the communication method, currently it says not used. I am going to highly recommend Intuit Service, which used to cost $20, but now it's free. So go ahead and select Intuit Service. It's the fastest, easiest, most reliable. It just happens through Intuit servers. It's the best. Once you hit configure here, uh, if it pops up and asks you for a validation code, then you need to call into it on, on the screen. It'll tell you who to call and you need to get a validation code and your licenses have to be valid and sincere and real and yours you validate that and you set up your store exchange uh, once you get it validated then you come up with uh, this screen which is asking for the license of store number two and so these are kind of like addresses store number two I'm gonna tell the headquarters license and and the headquarters store I'm gonna tell store number two's license so let me just throw this in here real quick this is how into its servers know who's picking up and dropping off the information that's heading to the different stores. So I'm gonna hit okay. There we go. I now have configured my Intuit service and uh, down here is a quick setting about alerting you if the uh, stores have not communicated within three days, that's fine. Over here, you are going to want to set the password for the store exchange. And that can be any old password. You can make it up whatever you want it to be. You just need to make sure that you remember what it is because you have to enter that password into each store that is in your multi-store chain so that Intuit knows that you have access to the files and that uh, you're a val... I don't know, it's, it's just a little piece of security so that the store exchange can happen and that... that uh, you don't have some weird other foreign store hooking up to yours and getting your info, which would be weird. I would recommend leaving this as default, just like it is. You really don't have to mess with that. Now I'm going to flip over to our remote store. In the remote store that I've partially set up already, it is going to want to know the license number for the headquarters. And so now I'm going to put that in. This is also going to use the Intuit service, just like that. And then for the store exchange password, I'm going to enter the same exact password that I put into headquarters. Okay, and continue. Now it's saying that I'm changing now, if you remember where we left off in my other video, uh, when we first installed the remote store, it was installed as a headquarters just by default, and then you need to change it to a remote store. And so that is what I am completing now. So there it has been changed now to store number two, a remote store. It's going to pretty much set up a new store, a new company. And then once we exchange for the first time, this remote store is going to get all of the products and all of the information from the headquarters. The headquarters is going to push it out. And so you're not going to create any items here or anything like that. That comes straight from the headquarters store. All right, it's been converted to a remote store. 
All right, there we have it. We have successfully connected the two stores. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna actually pull over. Okay, this, <laughs> this is a little confusing because I have a virtual machine going on in the background here. I have the main store is the one in the front here and store number two is the one in the back. Now on store number one, the headquarters, if I send files, hit send. It's going to send the HQ files to Intuit service. This is gonna take a minute, I think, probably because it's our first time sending. Oh, I guess it wasn't that crazy. All right, I'm closing that. Now if I pop back to the remote store and I say receive files, it's gonna check for files and there's one file waiting to be processed. I'm going to process it in. It's getting all the items, all the departments, all the records, all the, I don't know, customers maybe. And now it is done and I close. And now in my remote store, if I go to the item list, all of the items from the headquarters are automatically in store number two. That was a quick, uh, I guess, eight minute session on how to set up your um, store exchange and the password and everything so that the stores can communicate together. Stay tuned on the next video I'm going to show you how to set up the nightly store exchange so that it happens automatically in the middle of the night every night. Then you really don't have to do this manual send and receive. My name is Peter with BlackRock Business. Thank you very much for coming along. You have yourself an excellent day. All right, bye-bye.